Welcome to Proteome Cluster. This video is meant to help you get started using Proteome Cluster and to introduce you to some of its features. When you visit the site, proteomecluster.com, you are presented with a sign-in page. Enter your email address and password and log in. You are taken to the Runs page where your PCLIS files are listed. When you first log in, no files are present. Note the disk usage indicator. This tells you how much space you have remaining to store your files. In this case, other users sharing the server have used up some of the space. When you sign up for Proteome Cluster, you are given your own dedicated server with this space suited to your usage. We can increase the amount of space as needed. To upload PeakList files, click the Upload link. On the Upload page, click Browse Files and select the PeakList files to upload. Once the list is populated, you can remove selected files that you did not mean to include, or you can clear the entire list. To start uploading, click Start Upload. Be sure not to leave this page while your files are uploading. Once the upload is complete, return to the Runs page. We can see the PeakList files we just uploaded. To launch a cluster, select a run, select your search parameters from the pull-down list, and select the number of nodes in the cluster. Each node contains eight CPU cores, so specifying two nodes would create a 16-core cluster, while eight nodes would create a 64-core cluster. To start the search, click the Launch button. To make sure you don't launch any clusters by mistake, you then need to click the Yes button. The cluster is then created and the search started. We can launch additional searches, additional clusters, using different search parameters and or different runs. Hunter is single threaded, so only needs one node. Sometimes the peak list files represent fractions from an electrophoretic or chromatographic separation. You would like to search them all as a single unit, as a single run. In this case, the runs represent excised bands from an SDS page gel. To search all six runs, simply select the checks boxes next to each, then select your search parameters. We'll use eight nodes to create a 64-core cluster and launch. To monitor the searches, click the Searches link. Active and completed searches are listed. Note the Search Status column. Search time is shown, and CPU time will be displayed upon completion of the search. Searches can be canceled by clicking the X. It is not obvious from the entries which searches belong to which run. As we saw, this is complicated by the fact that we can run searches composed of multiple runs. The fastest way to find searches belonging to a run is to go back to the Runs page, select the run, and then click the link to the searches for that run. Click it and we are taken to the custom search page which only lists searches for that run. Going back to the main searches page, we see the current status of our searches. The Hunter search has completed five minutes after launch. It is a fast spectral library matching algorithm. Case score completed after 12 minutes, OMSA after 14 minutes, and Tandem after 15 minutes. In those 15 minutes, we used over 11 hours of CPU time. The Tandem search of the six runs together took 26 minutes and used just over 28 hours of CPU time. To download results from the completed searches, we click on the completed link. To view details of the search, click the search number. Here we get details of the search, including the parameters used, along with a download link for the parameter file. We also get the run search, along with a download link for the PCLIS file. For XBang searches, run statistics, including numbers of queries, peptide spectral matches, and peptides are shown. For all searches, the CPU time and search time are displayed. Below is a record of the files used for input to the search, including the PeakList file, parameter files, and sequence libraries. Opposite is a record of the nodes which compose the cluster. Below are outputs, including system time outputs for troubleshooting and the search output file. Below that is a log of the console output. For XBang files, we can view the output on the local GPM server. This is the standard GPM interface. You can interact as you normally would. 
selector protein to see sequence coverage and peptide hits. Select a peptide to view fragment coverage. There are no online viewers for OMSA search outputs. Download these and use the OMSA browser to view them. That is Proteome Cluster in a nutshell. Thank you for watching, and we hope that Proteome Cluster makes managing and searching proteomic data a bit easier.